I'm John Tarode and you're watching Joburg Today. Hello and a warm welcome to Joburg Today. I am Nashina Mohammed. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. While food inflation is decreasing after the drought, red meat prices are expected to soar. However, with the Easter holidays just around the corner, one would still like to have something that's meaty, special and not too expensive on the menu. Lamb and mutton, SA, and the bearded chef may just have the answer. Hi, I'm the Bearded Chef, and you're on Cooking with Lamb Channel, brought to you by Lamb and Mutton SA. Today I'm making Easter lamb burgers. Something very important to remember is you get different options in lamb mince. You get natural mince, and then you get the less fat mince. You know what you want to do is you want to keep it natural, you want the fat in there. Don't take the option of lean meat. You need that fat for the flavour, and it just brings out all the goodness of this lamb. So what you want to do is you want to choke everything in there, one batch, break it up, make it nice and loose. Then you want to get your hands dirty with all the ingredients. So firstly, you want to pop in the oats. From there, we have to move on to our spice, so get some seasoning in there. Black pepper, always good flavor. Salt, good taste. Then you want to do Italian herb. So it's oregano, rosemary, and parsley, all dried. I use whole coriander because I bash it up in the mortar and pestle. It's good to get all the flavors out. You accentuate all the flavors once you bash it up. So we're going to get some whole coriander in there and give it a good grind. So about a tablespoon. Last step is to get the egg in there. This is the whole binding process. Mix everything together. Next we need to make our lamb burger patties. So what we're going to do is take a nice handful of mince and roll it into a bowl. We'll roll it up and you want to actually just shape it with your fingers. Squeeze it down and just shape the sides so all the meat just stays intact. Okay, so I've made some burger patties that stayed in the fridge overnight. It's very important to put them in the fridge overnight so they can set. From here we need to get them onto the grill pan. So first step, we need to dress our grill pan so the patties don't stick. You don't want to handle these burgers too much because they flake up, they break. So I don't put them into a pan, the oven's better. Oven is set to 200 degrees. I like my burgers medium so they're going in for 15 minutes. So the Easter element of the whole recipe is hot cross buns. All right, let's slice the hot cross buns in half. Do you want to get them onto the griddle pan? So what we're going to do is open and actually press down on them so the lines char into the hot cross bun. When these lamb burgers are ready, they're going to work beautifully with these crispy hot cross buns. The burgers are done, let's put them together. Let's take them out. All right. Cut some cheese, mature cheddar. You want to spoil yourself a bit, so you want to put some cheese at the bottom first, just to get that layer. Choose a nice, big, juicy patty. Put it on the cheese. Press down a bit. And then just a little extra goodness. Some cheese on the top. What you want to do next is get some onion marmalade on there. Nice, green, crispy leaves. Chuck them on there. All right, now you want to close it. Squeeze down on it a bit. Mm, that is looking good. Mm -hmm. Tastes like Easter. Simple and nutritious, just the way nature intended. My name is Chef Coco, and you are watching Joburg Today. Like us on Facebook, joburgtoday.tv, and follow us on Twitter at Joburg Today. So why, despite an expected bumper maize crop, are red meat prices then going up? It apparently has all to do with the number of animals that had to be slaughtered due to the drought. We have about uh, 14 million head uh, of, of cattle in South Africa. And uh, estimations are that we, we, we went down to about 13.9, about losing almost a, a million uh, animals. Now, in actual fact, what it means is that uh, you are now not going to have marketable animals for slaughter. And the, the, the second thing is that we then have to rebuild the herds. Now, if you look at uh, the production process for, 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 for cattle, it takes two to three years to rebuild herds to levels that we, we had previously. So 
during that, that phase, it means there's, there's going to be shortage of, of cattle. And that shortage means prices will start uh, skyrocketing. While inflation on the, on the other f uh, food commodities are starting to decelerate, Yes. On the back of a bumper crop of uh, uh, grains. Yeah. What are we looking at in terms of the increase yeah. through the next 6 to, to 12 months? Right. So far we had about uh, close to 9% 9, 9 increase year on year on, on, on meat, meat prices. And we expect uh, uh, increases in the range and, and 9 to 15% in the next 12, 12 months. Will that also include price of chicken, pork and mutton? the increase will be on the back of substitution. People will start substituting to the cheaper ones, and obviously the demand for, for the cheaper ones increases, and therefore uh, it pulls the, the, the prices of the, of the cheaper ones. And the cheaper ones, in this case, we're talking about poultry. Now, another aspect of, uh, uh, about poultry is that uh, uh, the impact of, uh, of, of imports. Mm -hmm. when, we, you know, when we have an opportunity to import, we are able to uh, uh, you know, lower prices. At the moment, we have an avian flu in, in Europe, which is one of our biggest exporters. And also, we, we, we recently had a, 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 a ban on imports of uh, uh, meat from, uh, from Brazil following that uh, meat scandal. So the combined effect of those two uh, will result in a slightly lower uh, imports into South Africa. And remember, local pro uh, producers have been struggling uh, uh, of late. And uh, there has been a scale down on, in, in production, which means availability has become, is, is, is becoming limited, and therefore uh, prices of, of poultry uh, have recently you know, increased. How long are we looking at this price increase uh, going further? We are a net importer of, 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 of meat. Therefore, uh, <coughs> red meat will remain uh, elevated for uh, a, a longer period. With poultry, with the ability to import, if the issue of the avian flu uh, subs, uh, you know, subsides, the Brazilian situation is, is, is again sorted out, then we can start seeing imports coming in. Having Although at that, the moment, mm -hmm. uh, indications are that uh, we need to protect the industry from uh, massive imports that makes it you know, you know, uh, unprofitable for local producers. Uh, to, to be in business. So it looks like I won't be having T-bone steak tonight. <laughs> it depends how big you want to have it. <laughs> Paul Makube, thank you very much for being part of the show. My name is Chef Martin and you're watching Joburg Today. And that brings us to the end of the show. For more coverage on the city, do check out our playlist. And that's it from me, Nashina. Have a good one.